Today we are going to have a look at the brand new Google Earth which was released last week and it is amazing for use in class. To access this brand new version of Google Earth simply go to google.com slash earth or earth.google.com and these two URLs will bring you to this screen and what you can see here is a beautiful blue button. Now as soon as you click this button you will launch Google Earth within your browser so no more downloads and it works on every device. It will work on Chrome, it will work on your phone, on your tablet and on your Chromebooks. Now you can scroll down on this main page and you can change the language of the information shared on this page. Now one small little bug that I did notice and hopefully they will fix this soon is when you do change this language and you launch Google Earth it reverts back to English. Now in the future they will definitely fix this. Knowing Google they've probably already started doing it. Now let's have a look at this new version of Google Earth. Now this has been the biggest update so far. Right, as you can see we have beautiful 3D renders of our planet and our standard search function is still available. Now you will notice that there are a couple of other icons here. So we have our Voyager icon and this will allow us to go on guided trips. We also have a I'm feeling lucky which will take you to a random location anywhere on the planet and you can learn about that location. We have a bookmark icon which is called My Places and then we have a share button. Now what I would like to show you is how all these buttons work together. So let's go ahead and search for my home country of Belgium. So let's type that in now and you will see we are immediately taken to that country. And in addition to that, we are given some information about the country. Now, this information comes from Wikipedia and other sources, and it's just a great way of learning about different places. Now, let's say that I do want to learn a bit more about this country. I simply click on this information box, and I'm taking to another page. Now, within this page, you will see that there is information about the capital, about the dialing code. There is even information about our king and official languages. Now, as you can see, we have some points of interest. So any of your students that are doing research projects or learning about different cultures, different nations, they will love this because it is very easy for them to dive deeper into the information. So right now we are looking at information about the country of Belgium and we can dive deeper by simply clicking on my home city of Ghent. So we are now going to fly to Ghent. Google Earth is zooming in on Ghent and I can again learn more about this city. I can scroll down, I can see the area, the postal codes, I can see which province it's in and there's some points of interest which now again I can dive deeper or I can click on the little paper plane icon to go straight to that location which is what I'm doing now. We are now zooming in and you will immediately see another big difference from the old Google Earth with the new Google Earth. We have beautiful 3D renders of our cities. Now it takes a little bit of time to load because I'm on a slightly slower internet connection but as you can see I can zoom in and I have a 3D render of this castle. I can now go back and learn more about the castle by clicking on the image. We are flying around the castle and as we do that we can go and have a look at the background information. So you can see here is a castle in Ghent originating from the Middle Ages and more information. And Google being Google it also suggests other locations that people have searched for. So a very very powerful function for your students and for research. Now let's say that I find this a very interesting place and I want to reference this later within a lesson or within a presentation. What I can do now is I can simply click on this little icon which will bookmark this location and it has now been added to my places. As you can see I have it added to my places and there's a little pin dropped within my map. Now you can add as many pins as you like so let's say that you add over 10 different pins so let's also select this location and let's drop a pin and now let's select another location. There we go we are going to select uh, this area 
and we are going to drop another pin. Okay, so now you can see I have three pins dropped on my map. Now, I am talking about different things here. And let's say that within your lesson or your presentation, you only want to discuss the Gravenstein and not the other two locations. Well, it's simple. You click on this little eye icon. And what happens now is those two locations are hidden. You can also call up the information before flying to the location. So let's say, okay, not interested in that. I'm going to call up some information. I am interested in that, so I'm going to fly there. Good. That is the first big change in Google Earth. Now the second one is Voyages. Now Voyages takes you on a guided tour. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to have a look at some nature tours. And we're going to have a look at cherry blossoms in full bloom. So it takes us and we are going to explore this. And as you can see, these are pins that have already been predefined by Google. And it takes you on a beautiful guided tour. You see images, you see where it's located, you have your information that you can read out. And then you simply go through the tour. It flies you from location to location with information about its background. Very powerful indeed when you have large projectors or screens and you are doing lessons on these different topics. Now, as time progresses, more and more voyages are added, but I would suggest have a look because there are literally hundreds available at this time. The third big function is I'm feeling lucky and this will send you to a random place and this is great for those explorers amongst yourselves or if you simply have an extra five minutes and you just want to learn more about the world we live in. Here we have those breathtaking 3D renders of these locations. You can see we're flying around it, we are learning more, we can learn about its history and we can also find some related other castles. And again, those 3D renders. Now the last icon that we have not yet discussed is our share icon. So I can share this just as with the old Google Earth. I can share this on the social media or I can get a link to then share on my VLE or to share via email with other teachers or with my students. Now within our menu, we have a couple of options when we go to our settings. We can still change the fly animation speed. We can choose different regions. We can choose our units of measurement and we can have some zoom buttons. Now what I would suggest is that you make sure that everything is set up before you start exploring because this will obviously improve your experience with the new Google Earth. For now we're going to cancel this and I'm going to have a look at the map styles. Here we have a 3D style. We can also have a clean border style. So let's say that we just want a clean, no borders, no labels, no places. We can have the exploration where you can see there's more information added. Or we can have add everything and everything will add your streets and hotels and pubs. So again, you can choose these before you start your lesson. To summarize, this has been a very big update for Google Earth and I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation and that it has motivated you to try this out in class. Let me know how are you going to use this new Google Earth in class, how have you been using it and what do you feel are some of the added benefits of having these voyages and using them in class. I would love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and if you enjoy these tech videos don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we come out with more tech videos every single week. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.